What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered if Affinity version 2 was ever going to come out? Well, that's what happened today. Welcome back. My name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we are talking about version 2 of Affinity coming out. It just dropped today. My last video was all about speculation about what was going to be in the announcement that Affinity said they were going to make today, and now we're going to talk about it. Now, this is not a review of Affinity version 2. I haven't had time to do that. I have purchased and downloaded all of the apps. I bought the universal license, and that's basically where we're at right now, is that I've downloaded them, I've opened them, and looked at them, and I've looked through all of the new features, and looked at the videos that Affinity put out. But this isn't a review because I haven't had a chance to use it. I haven't had a chance to produce things on it. This is really just a first thoughts and reaction video. And as such, I really want to be able to hear from you guys as well. Go ahead and put in the comments what you are thinking about this. Are you angry? Are you excited? Are you frustrated? Are you inspired? What's going on with you and Affinity version 2? So let's dive into it. Now remember, the last video that I did was all about speculation. It was purely speculative on what might happen. And the benefit of speculating is that you don't have any constraints on you. You can just imagine what you want. And of course, we didn't get everything that we wanted, but let's talk about what we did get and what was right from the video that I did over the weekend. Well, first of all, we did get version two. That was my main prediction. That seemed like the really obvious thing. It didn't take a lot of predictive powers to come up with that one. And it did turn out that the little 3D wavy thing was a V and a two for V2. Up until now, I've been calling it 2.0, but they seem to be going with the V2 name, even though of course the version is actually 2.0.0. So that was correct. And then Affinity Publisher for iPad was also correct. That's one that seemed really obvious that they had already pretty much announced. They had said it was coming, they hadn't said exactly when, but it was obvious that this was going to be part of it. And perhaps that's what Ashley was talking about when he said, there's going to be one more thing that I know you've been waiting for. That seems to be the only option at this point. Um, though I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting there. We did get a lot of features that we've been wanting for a long time. The Shape Builder tool, of course, being probably number one because the fade designer has been out the longest and it's been the thing people have been complaining about for the longest period of time. So shape builder tool, definitely an important part as well as warping in a fade designer. That's another one people have been wanting for a long time. We didn't get every tool that people wanted. Of course we didn't. You just can't get everything. There's a lot of new tools and features. There's a lot still for me to go in and unpack there, but there are some things we didn't get. So let's hit on those and then we'll talk about a little bit more about what we did get and what I'm kind of excited looking at in the future. So what we didn't get that we were speculating about, but of course we're not at all sure of, was we didn't get a new app. There wasn't a new digital asset manager or a raw photo editor or a UI editor. And of course there wasn't a video editor or an animation app. So we didn't get any new app, which of course wasn't something that we were set in stone was sure going to happen, but it sure would have been nice if it did because there's still a couple of holdouts for people in leaving Adobe and it would have been really nice if we got either that digital asset manager or that raw photo editor or that UI designer. And those are things that could still come in the future. I would definitely not put it past them to create any of those things in the future. Video editor not coming and there's no reason with DaVinci Resolve. I just don't see Affinity ever doing the video editor thing. They're much more focused on kind of the design area. So we didn't get that, which a little bit disappointing, but that's to be expected. Another thing that didn't happen that I was speculating maybe would happen was the Mac and iPad version being merged into a universal app. So we didn't get that, but we did get universal purchasing. So you can now buy a universal license, which will include all three apps, designer, photo, and publisher, on all three platforms so that you can install it anywhere. That's Mac, Windows, and iPad. No Linux version. I'm sorry, I think I told everyone in the comments that that wasn't gonna happen, that I didn't think there was any way they would announce a Linux version, and they didn't. There just isn't the market there for Linux. It just doesn't make sense. No Android version, again, it doesn't make sense. There's no market for it to be a viable business for Affinity right now. They're a limited team, they can only do so much, and they would rather focus on iPad, obviously. But iPad's a lot better than Android anyway, so, you know, come over, come over to iPad ditch Android. But we'll talk a little bit more about the pricing of the universal apps in a second. The other thing that I want to mention is that they haven't brought in some critical and really important features that certain people needed. And one of those is right to left text. If you work primarily in a right to left language, Affinity just doesn't work for you. And I don't think that's right. I don't think that Affinity should ignore the right to left language like they have. They're cutting off a huge part of the market. It doesn't make business sense for them to do that. And I don't understand 
what the technical challenge is. I'm not a programmer, so I don't understand what the technical challenge is that's stopping them from implementing right to left text. Some people on the forum say that it would be really difficult for them to do that. Some people say that it would be really easy. I don't know, but I think the right thing to do is to implement right to left text. Another thing that I'm not completely sure on yet because I haven't seen everything that's there is what formats are available now in Affinity Publisher. There's been problems with formats both coming in and going out of Affinity Publisher before, some PDF stuff, some EPUB stuff, and I'm not sure if that has been corrected, but I didn't see it listed anywhere. So I'm kind of guessing it hasn't, which is a real shame. And these are just things that they aren't flashy like the Shape Builder tool, but they're important for some people's workflow. Again, these are not things that impact my workflow directly in the design that I do, but there are things that many people have commented on in the comments of my videos. And it's sad to see those things that are just these little under the hood improvements that people really need that Affinity doesn't seem to be doing. So I was a little disappointed on some of those things. Okay, so I'm sure there's a whole host of other things that didn't get implemented that people were hoping for. Go ahead and drop those in the comments below. Again, we can't expect everything. Now let's talk about what I'm kind of excited about, what I think is going to be great about Affinity version two. So while it's not everything that we might have hoped for, the price has remained unbelievably good. Like it's just mind blowing how cheap it is, especially right now with the 40% off sale for launch. So right now the universal app, which again, the universal app will give you lifetime access for version two to all three apps on all three platforms. So any place that you want to install it, you can any of the apps. And this is only $99 and 99 cents right now. That's what I got. That's what I went ahead and purchased because that of course makes tons of sense. Now when the 40% off sale is done, it'll be something like $170, I think, which will still be a great deal to get three apps. We previously, we were paying $55 for each app on desktop, whether that was Mac or Windows, you had to purchase those separate. And we were paying $22, I think, for apps on the iPad. So what one of the things that has changed is that you can purchase them all at once, just buy the license, and then you'll just sign into your account when you download them. And if anybody knows that you purchased them and you can use them. So the apps actually do not have a cost when you download them from the app store now, which I think will actually make it so you can have a trial on iPad, which will be the first time that's ever happened. The right way to go on this has to be to just purchase the universal license for $100. So I would say go out and do that. Like if you think you're going to use Affinity at all, just go ahead and purchase version two for $100 now. It's not that much for what you are getting. You're essentially getting a whole suite that would cost you thousands of dollars over the life of a product if you were going with Adobe. But here it's only going to cost you $100. And I'm not a salesman for Affinity. I don't work for them. I don't have any inside knowledge. None of that that people have accused me of in comments before. But I just really think that this is a great product for the price that you're getting. So you might as well go ahead and grab it. The only instance in which you wouldn't is if you are really going to work iPad only. If you're really committed to working only on the iPad, then you're going to want to probably just purchase each of the iPad apps right now. Because right now they're going for like 10 something dollars, I think, with the 40% off sale, really, really cheap. So if you were only going to work on iPad, you're never going to work on desktop, you could go ahead and just purchase those. But for anybody who's going to work on desktop, go ahead and get the universe license that one is the best one so I'm excited about that I think that keeping the price low and accessible that's what I care about the most with affinity right that's why people come to them is because their price is low and they're accessible and they don't charge a subscription and they made a point of saying no subscription right so you will get the updates for version 2 all the way until version 3 comes out which coming from affinity designer that's been like seven years since affinity designer first came out so I would expect we get another four five six years out of this Something else I'm excited about is to not hear people complain about the Shape Builder tool and the Warp tool anymore. Now that those are in Affinity Designer and those are the things I heard complaints about the most, I don't have to hear about that anymore in the comments. And that's awesome. Unless you all go comment that right now, in which case I'd have to hear about it. But please don't do that. Instead, tell me what you're excited about or what you're frustrated about with these new apps. So I'm excited to not have to hear about those anymore. I'm excited for some real quality of life improvements that are coming this way. They have implemented a style picker in Publisher and Designer which is going to be so much better than the color picker tool. Now we can finally pick up all of the different things associated with an object instead of just the color. And that is going to be really nice, I am sure. Along with that, there's going to be the option to copy layer effects. So you can put a bunch of effects on a layer and if it's looking just the way you want and you copy that to another, you'll be able to copy those without having to do them all over again. 
that's going to be super nice. Another thing that's really nice is there's going to be a content link between the apps. So they'll sync across the internet so that any assets that you put in will be there. This is something that people were asking for in the comments on my last video and I'm happy that it's actually coming. So brushes and different assets that you save into your assets library, those are all going to sync across which is going to be real nice. There's so many things coming, I can't go over all of them but I am excited for what the future holds for Affinity version 2. I think there's going to be a lot of improvements here. Well worth the price of 100 bucks, even if you already own version 1. It's worth it to go ahead and upgrade. Unless version 1 is doing everything that you ever dreamed of, then go ahead and stay with it. And if you've never bought Affinity, now's the time. Like, there's no reason to wait now. Just, just buy into it. 100 bucks, you're in. You've got it all. So... Let's do that. And if you are new to Affinity, remember I've got lots of courses. I'll link those down in the description below. I've got lots of courses. Of course, those courses are all based on version one stuff, but the apps, while they've changed, have not changed so significantly that that information isn't good anymore. Of course, I'll be making new courses over the next several months, but that's going to take me a while to do that. So if you need to learn it now, feel free to go ahead and check out those courses. Just be aware that some of the user interface has changed. That's one of the things they said was big with version two was user interface changes. I'm not sure that I like them, but of course I'm used to the old way. So maybe I'll get used to it in a few days and I'll be fine with it. I feel like they leaned in a little bit too much into the cartooniness of their icons and I'm not in love with it right now. Let me know what you think. If you've looked at the, the new icons, the new interface, let me know what you think. If you like it or don't like it, I'm just not in love with it right now. I, I didn't mind that they're being colored in the icons before, but it's just gone a little bit too far for me this time, but maybe I'll be fine with it in a little bit. Okay, lastly, one thing that I did see that was pretty exciting was the ability to basically continue to edit raw files, to not have to compress raw files anymore. So if you place a raw file in Affinity Publisher, you will still be able to edit it in the photo persona as a raw file, which is really, really good because you retain all of that information. Now, of course, this will make your file size huge. Right, so don't embed it, link it for sure, because raw files are going to come in at really, really big and you don't want your document to get huge. But just that idea that you'll be able to go back and edit the actual raw image without flattening it is really awesome to me. So there's a lot going on here. Again, I can't go over everything in this video, but I wanted to give you some of my quick reactions so you could kind of see what I'm thinking and I wanna hear what you're thinking. So go ahead and drop in the comments. Remember, tell me if you're excited, tell me if you're angry, tell me if you are ecstatic about this, tell me if you're frustrated by it, tell me if there's something that's missing that you absolutely needed and you still can't come to Affinity, or tell me if the thing that you've been dreaming of is finally here and now you're going to pull the trigger and go all in on Affinity. Let me know those thoughts and feelings down in the comments below. As always, we'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.